Hey cleaning family, it's Carolyn Arellano, your cleaning business mentor. And in this YouTube video, I am going to dive into why I restructured my business from W2 employees to 1099 contractors. So be sure to stick around for the entirety of this video. All right, you guys. So in this video, I am going to explain why I restructured my business from fully W2 employees to fully 1099 contractors. As many of you guys know, I am very transparent, honest and open about all of the ups and downs, peaks and valleys that I have been through on my journey with my cleaning business over the last six years. If you've been subscribed to my channel for quite some time now, or maybe binge watched all of my videos, you'll notice that in my previous or early YouTube videos, I talked a lot about my sister who used to be my business partner. Now I'm not going to get into exactly why we're no longer partners. I will leave that for another video, but I do want to talk about why I switched from W2 and 1099 contractors. And that really plays a really large part of why I shift how I I started to do my business. When we first started out our cleaning business, my sister and myself were solo cleaning with one another. We quickly scaled our cleaning business to over $300,000 in sales within the very first 12 months. So we had a huge jump in growth from making no money to making, like I said, over $300,000 from cleaning just her and I to having about five or six employees by the end of that first year. So when we first started our business off, we started to kind of split up the responsibilities, right? So I was the first one to take a step back from cleaning and started to work on marketing the business. That led to her being the head of operations, right? So I did a lot of the office work, marketing, customer service. I wore all of those hats where she went from solo cleaner to head of operations. So she did a lot of the hands-on training. She dealt with our cleaning technicians. She did a lot, a lot of things that weren't having to do with the back end or office part of the cleaning business. So she would buy supplies, she would restock all of our units, she would again train our technicians, she would help hire our technicians, she was the lead inspector. She was a lot of things, you know, again, we were 50, 50 doing the work, but she was my field manager, head of operations, whatever it is that you want to call it. She did a lot of the things. So it wasn't about until about a year and a half ago when she left the business abruptly that I kind of panicked and freaked out a bit because now I had a whole new set of responsibilities and I wasn't sure how I was going to manage the cleaning business. I actually almost gave up. Like not only did her leaving the business affect me, you know, business wise, but it really did take a toll on my mental health, on my personal well-being just because it wasn't a great split up or divorce, if that's what you want to call it. Right. And again, I'm not going to get into exactly why, um, to respect our privacy, but it was definitely a disruption in my life. And like I said, I fell into this really deep depression and I almost completely gave up on my cleaning business. I hated it. And I'm really glad that I didn't. I, you know, got some help time heals all wounds. And and I believe that. And I had to reevaluate what I was doing, right? I was like, let me take a look at my cleaning business. Cause to be quite honest with you guys, I was self-sabotaging for maybe like eight or nine months. I was self-sabotaging the crap out of my cleaning business because I was depressed because I was no longer, it was no longer enjoyable, right? Cause I didn't have my right hand. I didn't like it and I was hurting myself. I was not marketing the business, not giving a crap, you know, staying in bed. I was just doing everything, like almost unraveling my business that we built together so long for. And I just remember, you know, talking to all my mentors and I'm so grateful for them all. Daryl Bettler, Ricky Regalado, you know, Ricky Funk, all of my mentors. I have a lot that I, you know, I can't mention all of them in this moment, but um, I'm so grateful for them as well as my cleaning community, my good friends, uh, my best friend, Mila, the host keeper, you know, my family that I do speak with. They all kept telling me like, you know, don't sell this business. Don't let this business go under. Don't give up on something that you've worked for so long for just because you feel like you hate it. So I'm really thankful to my community and my close circle that really, you know, stuck with me and kept rooting for me, even when I didn't feel like that's what I wanted to do. 
But in that moment, I had to figure something out, right? So I finally snapped out of this depression, out of this funk of mine. And I was like, all right, Carol, let's see what's going on because things were a mess. Like it was a legitimate shit show i like i said was self-sabotaging i freaking hated it and i was kind of like waiting for this to just kind of die out i finally took that step back and was like let me look at what's going on let me look at my numbers let me try to figure out how i can make this work and be more profitable right so my sister left the business again huge disruptment in my life personal and business life and then when i took that step back and i actually looked at my numbers over the last four years so even before she had left i didn't realize that i wasn't being as profitable as i was in year one and year two and we'll get to that part so I took that step back and I reevaluated my business, looked at my numbers, and I was like, you know, this is crazy. Like even before my sister left the business, I wasn't making as much money, bringing home as much money as I was in year one and year two. And the reason being was because with that exponential growth that was happening, I had more costs, more overhead. So with W2 employees, as many of you guys know, you have that overtime right? You have sick days, you have benefits. Uh, with more employees that we brought on, we had to get more vehicles, which meant not just the cost of the vehicle, because even if we bought a used vehicle, we still had insurance going up. We had to reimburse for gas. We had to reimburse for tolls. So there were a lot of expenses. My expenses were growing as fast as my business was growing. And because I didn't have a professional accountant that was like always looking at my books, of course, we always did our taxes, but I didn't have, you know, or implement something like QuickBooks or have a professional. All I saw was I was making a lot of money, but at the end of the year, how much of that was I actually profiting, right? You can have a million dollar business and be negative at the end of the year, right? Because you could have a million and one dollars in expenses if you're not paying attention, if you don't have somebody looking over this information constantly. So know your numbers, right? You have to know your numbers. You have to know your margins. Like this is really, really important, you guys. So again, my expenses were like ridiculous. After COVID, as many of you know, if you guys have had your business since, you know, before COVID, pre-COVID, the expenses for everything has went up. Cleaning supplies have skyrocketed. Items that we used to pay like $3 for or like under $3, for example, like Easy Off, the oven cleaner, used to be under like three bucks. Now in 2024, we're looking at almost $7 a can. Glass cleaner has gone up. All of the residential cleaning supplies, I can say with conviction that they have doubled in price, right? Gas prices have went up, toll prices have went up. The overall cost of living has risen, which means as business owners, we need to start charging more and we need to take a look at our numbers and see, okay, where can I save some money or what can I do differently to bring these expenses down? So we took a look at all of that and I realized like, wow, this is getting out of hand. The cars, the overtime, the storage units. We had multiple storage units all over the state of New Jersey and New York. Just all of these things, all of my overhead was too much. And then, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, my sister leaving left me with a whole lot of responsibility. As soon as she left the business, I was able to pay the technicians that I did have, my W-2 employees, a couple of dollars more an hour. So I gave them her responsibilities. I had a meeting with some of my best cleaners and I offered them an additional $3 per hour to split up some of her responsibilities. So now my top best cleaners were now lead trainers. Some of the girls were now washing their own rags, restocking the supplies, doing the quality checking, all of those things. But that was only just a quick fix to help me figure out how do I split up my sister's responsibilities now that she's no longer here to help me. So I I was able to do that and that was just a quick fix for me because that still left me with the fact that I had a ton of overhead. And to be honest with you, at that point in my career of being in business, I had already launched my mentoring program and business. And that is my main focus. Like that is what brings me joy. That is what I love doing. My cleaning business will probably forever be my core business, like the business that brings me in the income that allows me to do the other things that I work on, my other projects like the mentor 
mentoring. I now have a cleaning products business, my content creation. So my cleaning business is my core business. It allows me to do all of the other things that you guys see me do. But I was like, okay, how do I make this work in a manner where I don't have to be so hands-on, where I don't have all of these expenses? So part of that was taking the advice and listening to other cleaning business owners, right? Asking my friends like, hey, can you tell me more about this 1099 contracting method? Because I really didn't know much about it. I had always had W2 employees because my very first mentor, who was my business mentor, and he still is to this day, taught me so much, told me I should do it W2, right? W2 employees, because that's how he runs his business and that's what he knows. He doesn't own a cleaning business, he owns a manufacturing business, but that's what he knew and that's how I structured my business. So I started to talk to other cleaning business owners that did the 1099 contracting method and I'm like, you know, what's going on here? Like, how can I do this in a way that is going to be more profitable for me and give me less responsibility? So again, talking to my friends, you know, Mila the host keeper, my mentor, AJ Simmons, my mentor, Ricky Regalado, Ricky Funk, Daryl Bettler, just getting advice from all of these different people who do either a hybrid of W2 and 1099 contracting, but just hearing them out and seeing how things were ran in their businesses really gave me clarity as to like, almost like an aha moment. And to be honest, I was like, why the hell haven't I done this sooner? even before my sister left, right? Why didn't I do this sooner? I had this, like, somebody put something in my head at some point that I had to have W-2 employees. I had to have the cars. I had to have the offices, the multiple storage locations, that I had to have this control, right? Because I think that was like one of our biggest fears is having control of the cleaning. And again, that was like my biggest thing. So after speaking with all of these other cleaning business owners that have been doing this method, I realized I can do this as subcontracting. I do not need employees on my payroll. So what I did was I set up a bunch of systems, right? Checks and balances to make sure that the cleanings were getting done correctly. So that meant not only connecting with or partnering with cleaning businesses that I know and trust and have, you know, a, a good history of having quality cleaners, but also implementing things into my own business, right? So the whole recleaning policy that we have, we no longer do recleans. We no longer offer any monetary refunds. And this is all on our website, all on all of the things, instant quoting and booking, you know, making sure that if the clients were home, they were doing the walkthrough, right? To check, to make sure that while the cleaners were still there, if something was missed, they could go over it. Talking with my partners, AKA subcontractors and letting them know like, Hey, if you have to go back and do this reclean, you're not getting paid for the reclean and you don't get paid for the clean until the 24 hours is up and that window for a complaint is closed, right? So this is just like some of the checks and balances that we have implemented, right? So I did a lot of changes with how our policies were ran, who was going to be doing the quote unquote quality control, which is both the client and the team that I sent out, having photos sent, videos, you know, using the ZenMade platform to make sure everybody has their checklists and, and really understanding with my subcontractors and having that clear communication as to the expectations. So setting the expectations is really important and knowing who you're working with. So once I had that all figured out and also just side note, the employees that I did have that were still working for me, which was a handful of them, I let them know, I gave them about seven or eight months notice and I just let them know like, hey girls or guys, I'm no longer gonna be having you guys as W2 employees because it's just not profitable for me. It doesn't make sense. I don't like the responsibility. So in the next couple of months, we are going to still have work for you full time, right? Cause that was our biggest thing. However, we're gonna do this in a subcontracting method. So if you were making $17 an hour before, you're now making 35. That also meant that I had to raise and increase my prices. Now I had told you, you know, my overhead was crazy. I hadn't raised my prices in years. You know, I had to do some more market research and see what the market was at, what my competitors were charging because the economy completely changed, right? So that was another thing I had to do was raise my prices, let my old clients know like, hey, this is what it is now. If you can't meet me somewhere halfway, you know, we're not gonna be able to work for you. So yes, I did lose some clients, but 
that wasn't an issue for me. I know how to find more clientele. As you guys know, I'm very good at social media. I'm very good at marketing. So yes, to answer your question, because I'm sure you're asking yourself, well, what about your old clients? I had to go back and tell them that there was a little bit of an increase, right? Nothing crazy, but it had to make sense for me to keep them on because as a cleaning business owner, you shouldn't be in business just to give your technicians work. Sometimes, yes, we have to break even, but you should not be losing money just to help somebody else out. And that was something else that I had to go over and really like tell myself, like I am in business to make money. I am not in business to just pay people, right? So I did let my W-2 employees know like, hey, we're going to be going to the subcontracting method. I helped a few of them set up their businesses. I helped a few of them get their insurance policies, add me as an additional insured. And then I said, hey, if you were making $17 an hour, now you're making 35. Okay, now you're making $35 an hour for every hour that you work. However, more responsibility comes with that. What does that mean? You have to buy your own cleaning supplies. You have to get yourselves to, to the jobs. I'm no longer paying for a driver for those that didn't have licenses. So during those eight or seven, seven or eight months, I believe it was, not only was I just telling them like, hey, this is what's gonna happen. I was helping prepare them. I was helping them get their licenses. I was making sure they passed their road tests. I was making sure they were opening businesses, getting the insurance that they need. You know, I love to help people. I even sat down and told them like, I want you to not only continue to be a solo cleaner as a subcontractor, but I want you to grow your own cleaning businesses. I'll help you with your websites. I'll help you with marketing. So this wasn't something that just happened overnight, right? Because people freak out right away when you have to give them more responsibility. So this was a seven or eight month process that I was slowly changing, making changes and uh, letting these people know, my cleaning technicians, making them aware that this is what it's gonna be moving forward. So I did all of these changes and right away, I felt relief. I was no longer paying for my storage units, which were like 150 a month. Everything was going up. I was no longer paying for cleaning supplies. I no longer had to go shopping for these cleaning supplies. I'm no longer washing rags at the laundry mat, right? I'm no longer an Uber to my business. I'm no longer a lot of things. I am 100% hands off with my cleaning business. I don't even answer the phone anymore. I have a VA that does all of that admin work for me and I just focus on running ads, which is not difficult at all. So these are a lot of the reasons why I switched over from W2 to 1099. Again, a huge part of that was because my profitability was getting eaten into by my overhead. And then I had that huge disruption in my personal and business life when my sister just up and left my cleaning business. And I I had to figure out like who is going to be the head operations like how am i going to do this and then of course i found my true calling which is helping other people start their businesses helping people thrive helping people get from these low places in life empowering people to understand that you don't have to work that shitty job you don't have to bartend at night you don't have to you know make all these sacrifices like i did in order to make money and be profitable. So there was a number of reasons, like I said, as to why I switched over from W2 to 1099, but I can tell you again, and this doesn't, it's not gonna work for everybody. It's not everybody's cup of tea, okay? If, you know, in the comments, I'm sure people are gonna come after me and tell me why W2, W2. I'm happy with my business. I'm happy with where my business is currently at, my cleaning business. We're still doing multiple six figures. I. The money that is coming in, I'm actually taking home. Because like I said, people will tell you all the time, oh, I own a million dollar cleaning business. I'm doing 750,000, I'm doing 10 million. That's awesome, but how much are you netting? How much are you bringing home? And that's what matters. Know your numbers, you guys. Even if you're only doing $10,000 a year, right? and your costs are low, like that's awesome. You can have a cleaning business. You don't have to hit that million dollar mark. You don't have to, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't, right? That's a great goal, but know your numbers. That's what's most important. Because like I said, we were growing so fast. I wasn't paying attention to my numbers. I was not profiting as much as I was when I only had the one vehicle, you know, working out of my house and such. So definitely know your numbers. Consider why, do your pros and cons as to why you wanna go W-2. 
why do you want to go 1099? Like really think about that. Is it because somebody told you you should do W-2? Is it because you have that notion in your head because you think that having a huge team of people that are on payroll make you a boss? Because honestly, that stuff like that doesn't matter. It's all about how much money are you bringing home at the end of the day, right? So again, a lot of our employees, they're still working for us. They're just subcontractors or working underneath one another. And also something that I have been able to do is scale even more because now I work with other cleaning companies that I trust and know. So you don't have to like, even if you have no W-2 employees and this is how you want to start off is straight 1099, do it. I always tell my one-on-one -on -one mentees, like, listen, if I could go back to six years ago, I would have set it up the subcontracting method because I still would have been marketing my business the same, right? But my overhead, I wouldn't have had all that overhead. I currently have roughly, and I want to make sure this is like close to, but I think my overhead right now to run my cleaning business is like under $2,500. And that's with a full-time VA running ads, the platforms that I use and just not having all of those crazy expenses. And again, we are still doing multiple six figures, very close to $500,000. And I love it. I love having money in my account. I love not being hands-on and it just works for me. And again, this is not going to work for everybody. I'm just sharing my personal story within the cleaning business and the many reasons why I decided to restructure my business. Now, if you guys found this video informational and educational, please be sure to hit that like, the subscribe, and the notification button so that you guys are notified each and every time I upload a new video. As I mentioned previously, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have online courses, internal forms for your business. We build websites. We provide or build Google ads. We build instant booking forms. My main goal in life is to help people scale their cleaning business and be profitable. So if you guys want to work with me, please be sure to check out the link in my bio.